something you can't fix. If you can't fix what's broken, you'll, uh, you'll go instead. It's Jay and Adam. It's Previewed. It's Previewed's Fix It with Adam and Jay. Hey, peaches! Oh, welcome to Fix It. We're friends. Don't let friends fix pop culture alone. I'm Adam. And I'm Jay. And you're our listener. Well, hey there, listeners. Ho oh, there, listeners. Do you want to join our crew and then stand silently in the back row of our little party for about an hour? Yes, that's right. We listeners? are listeners. We are we're looking for hype men. We're looking for the entire nation to come and back us up in all of our uh, dance break and hip hop battles. We need we need stalwart and silent hype men just standing. Yes, the statue crew. You know what I'm saying? That's I, that's the whole reason. Oh. That's the whole reason we started Flusteria in the first place for backup. I had no idea. Yeah, man. Yeah, we're rolling deep, Jay. We roll real deep. We roll real deep. An entire nation of people show up anytime. Just ready to go. Oh! Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Isn't that isn't that all social media really is? Just an internet version of that? Yeah, man. Yeah. Wow. Feels good. Feels good. Welcome to our show, Fix It. I'm Jay. That's Adam. You may know us from the wildly successful YouTube reaction yeah. channel, Previewed. Um, where we give you uh, the episodes you crave, <laughs> you know, we, we give them. We, that's our motto here. Here at Preview, yeah. we give them what they crave. <laughs> Ta- yep. When I get Timely. here, when I get here, I take my coat off and I, I I brush my hands off and I say, "All right, time to give them what they crave." Yeah, baby. Uh, yeah, but this is our podcast, Fix It, where every week Adam and I take a piece of pop culture that maybe missed the mark, maybe didn't quite get there, maybe just. Just forgot to be a movie. Forgot to be a movie, and we fix it. And this week, Adam and I are going to be fixing twenty twenty three's Rebel Moon, part one. Part one, the girl chasing fire, fire, girl, girl fire, for the girl, the on, girl fire? on the, the dra- fire. girl with the dragon tattoo. Yep, it, slash Hunger Games. <laughs> the fi- fi- fire, the Fire Nation attacked. Whatever it's called, it has too much oh, title. Oh, it's just it's just Child of Fire. Child of Fire, uh, Rebel Moon Part One, or is it Rebel Moon Child of Fire Part One? Uh, I think our confusion is speaking to aspects of this movie that did not quite work out already. Uh, but before we uh, <laughs> before we attempt to untie this Gordian knot, uh, Adam and I have recently watched Rebel Moon. Uh, we're, we are putting out a reaction to it uh, because uh, the second part is coming out. I think you probably it's a good chance you've already seen there. Maybe it. is a good chance you've already seen it, or maybe it's coming out very very soon. We haven't quite determined that yet. Um, but uh, Wowzers, Bowsers with the top hat on. Uh, it's I will say it's a reaction for the books. That is for sure. Definitely. Um, uh, Let's see what comes out this week. But bef- Yes, it does indeed. Uh, but before we uh, react to Rebel Moon Part 1 and fix it, reacting, fixing, whatever, what are we doing here? Uh, we've come to everyone's absolute most favorite segments. We took a poll. Uh, it's a Roll for Convo. And in Roll for Convo, Ab and I uh, have 20 topics of conversation that uh, we're going to deepen our friendship, deepen the fellowship. You know, whatever, however we want to say it. Uh, <laughs> sure. Mm-hmm. I like uh, fellowship. No one usually uses that anymore. Yeah, I know. Well, they use it at church, but do they? Yeah, oh, all the time, all the time, all the time. The fellowship hall, baby. Um, but we have twenty topics of conversation. And I'm gonna roll a twenty sided die to figure out what our first segment is about. Uh, and here we go. That is a gentleman six. Six. Oh, okay. Which comic book run or series is your absolute favorite? That's tough. Like, just specific run? Is that the question? What comic book run or series is your absolute favorite? Um, maybe just okay. Give, maybe go top five. There's a lot of there's some really good answers here. No, I think I can. I think I can you, be you definitive. Can pick one? I think okay. I can be definitive. One of my favorite comic books. Period. Mm-hmm. Um, Transmetropolitan. Oh, okay. I've never read that one. Um, oh, you can borrow it. I own all of it. Wow. Okay. Um, 
you know, and Spider Jerusalem is a uh, is a journalist in like a cyberpunk future, mm-hmm. but it's like it's pretty, it's really gritty, it's really fun, it, uh, yeah, transmet really really rules, and I really like, and it's like a complete story. Mm-hmm. It, it you know like most comic books, it kind of like jumps off in different directions mm-hmm, here and mm-hmm, there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, if I were to pick like from like the main canon of things, sure, uh, I think that the Bendis like late 2000s run of um of like the overarching meta of what's going on in the Marvel Cinematic Universe starting specifically with Avengers Disassembled mm-hmm. when Wanda completely freaks out and starts killing Avengers sure. which goes into House of M mm-hmm. which inevitably breaks into Civil War mm-hmm. that whole sequence is well i mean it's also basically responsible for the mcu that we have right i mean it's a large amount of those but some of those it has just so many iconic moments Mm -hmm. specifically like dude the i can still i can picture the shot of uh i think it's jack of hearts that opens the door at Avengers Mansion and and gets just completely obliterated. Okay. Like I don't and, even know who that character is. And specifically when Scarlet Witch says no more mutants. Yes. Like there's just so many iconic moments. And it was just a really, really exciting time to be reading comics. Sure. And it was also at a time in which I, I had a pull list with Brian and Gary <laughs> and we would read everything. Oh cool. Like so a, like we, like a group pull list? Yeah. We were like oh, that's a, a cool group idea. Like we would all like cover the spread on sure. who's buying what yeah. and we'd all you know trade stuff off and read it and it was just dope it was just a dope time to be reading comics and uh yeah i also really really like cassidy's run on uh captain america okay like his stuff is uh his his artwork is just so visceral mm-hmm. and so like realistic in a way that i really yeah but I can think more. Do you, is anything coming to mind for you? Oh yeah, I got I got plenty. Hit me with a hot you know, note. I read the books, Jay. Oh, so is Invincible on that list? For Invincible's you? on the list. Really? It's 144 issues. It's a completed series. It, Invincible's. It's you have to read it. I, oh my god, read it. There's omnibuses out there now. I can't read it yet. No, you can't read it yet. And this is more of a you at home. You should read it. If you haven't read it already, re- read it. It's because it's it is different than the than the show. But um, because things are definitely things definitely hit a little bit different, and it's it was it's been done for, geez, about ten years or so at this at this point. So Kirkman has had a chance to they did things better in the show than they did in the comic. Yeah, a lot of the plot points. Well, that's I mean, but that's to but, be expected sure. because you know yeah. it's come out so much later mm-hmm. after it's come out. I'm sure there's you know like oh, I would have done this differently if I have another chance. Now you do. Yeah, but Invincible's just it's such a ride. It's so amazing. It's so crazy and just. And I will say, slightly spoiler alerts. It's it it's it has a happy ending, and that's kind of a prerequisite for old Adam Lash. Well, it what it's a Kirkman book. I know, so, which you wouldn't expect to have a happy. And he ending. even wrote it's like at the at the end of the book, and like he says, you know, final splash. That's page actually or good to know because watching that show, I wouldn't anticipate that there would be a happy ending. He, of any it, capacity. He has like a last little page, and it's like so. The first, I think, like the first or so, like in the first paragraph, it's like so happy ending, huh? But you weren't expecting that. Yeah, happy ending, guys. I was like, "Yo, and what and earned? This is gr- wow. That yeah. and, and this isn't an ass pull. This is you're not just like no. This makes total sense, and you've earned this. Yeah, this is this was great. I can and dig th- it. And this cover, this sh- series covers some really dark topics, and this is you know what, awesome. So invincible, De- definitely read that. Um, uh, um, Jeff Johns run on Green Lantern. From, re- oh. from rebirth to brightest day, although brightest day is not the best, but it's not those the six. But through wh- darkest night, oh come on, man! The That's success just... of the of that run isn't always necessarily the like nitty gritty actual storytelling of what's going on. It's just expanding that universe in such a like every every time he expands the lantern universe, it's awesome, mm-hmm. and you just feel like. You j- it all and it almost that run f- almost felt like you were the one dis- figuring it out, being like, "Oh my god!" Like if it wasn't for me reading this, no one would know about all- you <laughs> the know what I mean. Spectrum. It just felt special. Yeah. There was something special about that run. 
He that, just had a really good idea for the Green Lantern Corps, and it's like, and the, and the emotional spectrum in, in general. Yeah, but yeah. A rebirth, the Sinestro Corps War, to Blackest Night, to Brightest, the Brightest Day. But um, yeah, because Brightest Day was not the best. But dude, dark. And if you ended at Darkest Night, holy, oh my God, it's such the, the Black Rings. Holy crap, was yeah. that an event? Um, so there's that. Uh, I would say, is it the I I don't know Marvel as well as you. But I did jump on board and loved Thor's War of the Realms. Yes, a- Aaron is it? A- is his last name Aaron's? Was the right? The, I can't the, honestly. I'm not good at remembering. I don't. So I'm really. For, I'm sorry about the not knowing the guy's uh, name because that's all the stuff when they're in Oklahoma, right? So it's when Jane gets the hammer. Yes. Yeah. 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 Jane gets the hammer. Uh, Thor's off on his own doing his own thing. Yeah, really like uh, there's other. There's another. The, the ultimate hammer comes in. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eclipso is the one. Right, it's like so. Right, I, no? I can't. The guy who was in the, the, the one who the one who was in the the bad guy from the second Thor film. Bad guy from the second. The second, the, the dark elf. Oh, I don't remember his name. Okay, but that guy. He was the bad guy. Maybe Eclipso might be a DC. No, Eclipso is yeah. Um, but uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Yar. Uh, but it's just like holy! Cr- th- it was just so good, and Jane being Thor was awesome. It just like the whole. Th- it was just like. Yo, man, Thor books are good. When they're good, they're good. Wow. But they can, they're not oh, always. Not, they're not always. But, man, they were. he was just like, oh, yeah, Asgard's doing this. And all the realms, we got plenty to play with here. It's like, holy. Yeah. This is it's amazing. just so funny. It's so funny to me to think about, like, just how the MCU has completely changed, like. Because that, here's the thing. When that stuff was going on with Thor, mm-hmm. a lot of, like, a lot, there was a lot of cool stuff happening with Thor before like the M before like the MCU really took off Mm -hmm. and it was just kind of like, and it was kind of a, it felt fun that there was a fun Thor book Mm -hmm. because that was a character that nobody really totally cared about really that much. I mean, they do like, that was the thing. Like when adventures disassembled happened, it was kind of time because, uh, it was, it was almost a comment Mm -hmm. on, what we've been doing with it with this team and this aspect of Marvel is kind of old hat, and we kind of need to restructure a little bit. Sure, um, because the Avengers really weren't that big of a deal, huh? <laughs> Before, wow, yes. really? Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. dude! There is a reason that that Spider Man and X Men were owned by different companies because those are the only ones that people wanted to buy. Wow. Do you know what I'm saying? I I do now. Yeah. Huh. It was like like Iron Man is not that big of a deal until Robert Downey Jr. played it. Hmm. Like it wasn't. It just wasn't. Sure. Like Iron Man was like a B tier character before that all went down. Mm-hmm. Like it's so funny to me. And now that like and now they're a huge deal. Like people would have been like, oh, I know the Hulk, but that's kind of it. Huh. You know. Wow. Yeah. Um, the, was it the new 52, the court of owls run on Batman? Yeah. The first, whoever, I think it was the new 52. It was whoever had, was it Tom King who had Batman for like a hundred issues and it just, court, yeah. it was like court of owls and then Damien stuff. Like it was just like, this is so freaking good. Oh, did you read the ultimates? I didn't. I would recommend it. That's another run of, like, around that time. Mm-hmm. That's where, where when we rediscovered Sentry. Oh, My yeah. My boy, yeah. Sentry. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Super Sons were good when John and Damien were both kids. And having you know, being the sons of Batman and Superman. Yeah, I get that a little... That was kind of fun. I, I, that's, that, those were... When they keep talking about, like, all... I just... There's too many, there's too many Robins... There are too many Robins. There's too many Robins, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Oh, well, in the third one." And I'm like, "We, we got to Tim. A, we should yeah, not." Tim. He's the best. I I understand. I, yeah, I I under, yeah. Tim is best Robin. I understand, but don't. Dick is Nightwing. Dick is amazing. He's he's about he is ascended beyond Robins. I'll be honest. I think the success of the success of Batman is not in the Batman stuff. It's in that he has the best villains. Uh, because sure. I mean, from a cat, I don't read a ton of Batman comics, mm-hmm. but I, I don't know. Yeah. Sometimes they're like, well, you know, this one and that one and that one. I'm like, there. I'm here for Batman. Why is why why are there so many Robins? <laughs> uh, I don't know. You got any more? 
because I keep going. Yeah, hit me. Uh, uh, you you read more now than I do. I would I would because I, I don't I haven't read comics in a while. I would absolutely say the Power Rangers run from basically from jump through shattered grid through the um some people didn't like it but the the aftermath of the shattered grid was pretty good and then the uh, darkest hour is going on right now and it's oh it's okay i think it's overstaying a little bit but it's still but it's still like it's good power rangers yeah like that's the thing these these comics may go on and go like hey this isn't the best but it's still better and more adult than any of the shows and that's all we need it just yeah. needs to be just a little bit. It's just a little bit more serious than the shows are because the shows are ge- geared towards kids. This comic is kids can read them, of course, but like no, 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 actual ramifications, like psychological issues that yeah. like everyone's dealing with the stuff. Like there's actual fallout. Like parents are dying. Like just natural causes. Like it's life. Life stuff is happening. Yeah. And these kids are de- kids slash twenty. You know they're in their twenties. Some of them. Like we're we're dealing with this. Oh yeah. So like, no, no, no. The stuff is. A little bit more serious. I was like, oh yeah, this is pretty, man, this is good. And all they're just morphing and calling into the Zords. It was like, they keep coming up with new ways of doing it. Yeah. Like, this is fun. Oh, I also really liked, I have a couple more. Great. Uh, they're not exactly the best, but I have a lot of affection mm-hmm. for them. Uh, when they revamped New Mutants. Okay. And uh, with like the, with Hellion and stuff like that. And with, uh. Like the the like revamp of New Mutants when they came back was really really fun and like when Danny was a teacher then at that point oh. and like you got like you kind of got it like it was new New Mutants but like I don't they would they wouldn't call it that but new it's what I I just had a lot of fun during that book sure um I mean there's you know X Men has so much to it um I rem- <sighs> there was something special when the boys first came out. There was. I got exhausted about the, like from that book, but there was something really fun and special about like the first couple of issues of that. It just hit different. Yeah. It just like felt good. Yeah. Um, it, I, I I have read all of the boys. I I jumped out after the lamplighter stuff. I had to be done. It I is, just, dude. It it just continues. It's just it's just dark. It's just it gets really dark and just it's like oh man, these are everyone's terrible. Oh my god, there's no there's no hope here. Oh my god! They're yeah. just reveling in all this, you know, gore in the, the badness. Yeah, the show's just so much better. Yeah. Oh, and lastly, most things that Scotty Young does. Oh uh, sure. When Scotty specifically when Scotty Young was doing uh, the New Warriors. Okay. And I just and that was the stuff that led up to Civil War. Mm. Oh. It wasn't that big of a book, but mm. it, that when Speedball, like when all of that went down, like. I will never, man. I I I I'm still to this day not a huge fan of the MCU's version of Civil War. Okay. Because here's the thing: I think they did exact they did they made the movie the way they needed to, mm-hmm. and they made it work. And it in the grand scope of what the movies that they made, mm-hmm. but like as someone who was reading a lot during that time, mm-hmm. seeing all the pieces come together of that happening. And having it happen in like a book that was kind of silly and fun, like having the medium change felt like it was part of it because it was like, oh, like superheroes are happy and fun and this is kind of silly and stupid. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is going to like the like the artwork almost informed the tone change. Oh, Sure. And then seeing Speedball, who was happy and silly and fun, come back as penance and that whole thing. Although I think they kind of gilded the lily a little bit on that one. Sure. It was just kind of like, all right, this is a bit mm-hmm. much. Um, and also like new mute, like uh, new Avengers and like Young Avengers during that time frame was also really fun because you got to see the infrastructure of what was happening. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there is nothing like when they killed Goliath and in, in I, I remember like just. I remember gasping audibly that one of my roommates was like, what's going on? I was like, dude, I was like, eh, we're in big trouble. This is, this is breaking bad. That. Yeah, dude. Yeah. All right. One more to add to that. Uh, Jeff John's run on teen Titans up through. Oh in, yeah. Up through I don't know. In, any... Infinite, infinite crisis. Jeff Johns is an incredible comic book maker. Mm. I don't know if, I don't know if I stand behind a lot of his movie choices, but, Com- but comic books wise. Yeah. It's hard to argue. He did a great job. 
Roll for convo. Roll for that's been roll for convo. We did it. Wow, we got really bogged down in the specifics. I, I comics, man. No, 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 no. I know. I just, I almost just like wasn't with roll for convo and like where it's been going lately. I wasn't expecting, um, something actually like you know actually de- like I needed to do yeah. details. Mm-hmm. I assume it was just going to be about rugs or something. Well, Jay, anything goes in comic talk. That's true. That's true. This is rug talk. What are we doing here? Talking about comic books. Well, what are we even doing here? Huh. All right. Rebel Moon. Rebel Moon. Rebel Moon. Here comes Rebel Moon. <laughs> but before we get into Rebel Moon, we should probably hear from our lovely producer, Brian, and figure out um, what what we need to know about this movie. Because We I need mean, to know a lot about this movie. We need to know a lot about this movie, because there's some writing on the wall in this film in a way that I, mm-hmm. I don't... I don't fundamentally understand, and I've done a little bit of research on, but I'd love him, I'd love Brian oh. to communicate that to you. Um, in everyone's most favorite segment, we took a poll. Brian, <laughs> when you roll that beautiful bean fun fact footage. Thank you, gentlemen. Producer Brian here. And today we're trying to fix 2023's Rebel Moon Part 1, A Child of Fire. Directed by Zack Snyder, it stars Sophia Boutella, Jaiman Hansu, Charlie Hunnam, and just a lot of other people like Cleopatra Coleman. It had a budget of $168 million that it actually shares with its sequel. It was released on Netflix and had 29.3 million views in three days. It earned an overall worldwide total of 72.9 million views, whatever those numbers actually mean. Here are some fun bean facts. It did have a limited theatrical release on December 15th, 2023. It is heavily inspired by Akira Kurosawa movies, Star Wars, and heavy metal magazines. Snyder developed the idea in college, which explains a lot. Netflix wanted him to cut it down, so they agreed to make it two movies. The sequel is The Scar Giver, and the idea is that would be a trilogy and then spawn its own universe. We'll see. And if you care, this movie has a 21% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 2.0 out of 5 on Letterboxd. Also, a big shout out to Why the Last Man and Fables for being my favorite comic books. Anyway, back to you gentlemen, and please enjoy writing your fix. Great job, Brian. Well done, Brian. Well done, Brian. Good. The, the, the mother world planet? Says said he said good job. They said it a bunch of times, but it never meant anything. M- mother world, mother something, sure. fa- something, home world, home. I think that is evil for reasons. Mother was it Earth? I, that is I, just I evil I, for reasons. They did. They also did a long, long exposition drop at the beginning, in a way that. Well, let's. let's they did a long exposition drop at the beginning with no words on the screen, and but then, then the words were corresponding with a. A subspace tear yes that looked like female anatomy yeah and then a very male anatomy looking ship passing through yeah it felt like it was on said purpose. opening it felt like it was on purpose i was like there's no way and so yeah the word we didn't we stopped paying attention to the words being yeah, said <laughs> it was it was true it felt gratuitous it was uh, you know, there's there's media literacy and understanding the meaning of things, but then there's just like, oh, that nope, no. Um, but before we we get further into Rebel Moon even more, we should probably come to everyone's absolute most favorite segment. Uh, we took a poll. We I did another one, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, when uh, we describe what happened in Rebel Moon in everyone's favorite segment, plot drop. I can do the plot drop. You wanted okay, yeah. You can do it. I believe. Yeah, man. Uh, there's rebels in space. Uh, the government of the main, of the home world sends a, a, a force of of uh, their army, their space marines, out to go stop, find the leaders, and stop the army. Uh, they approach a agricultural based planet, uh, who are just apparently grow the Shire, and they grow wheat, and they need supplies to feed their soldiers. So they, uh, you know, very harshly negotiate with these farmers that they want. Negotiate. They will take their their grain and leave a. a leave some soldiers behind to make sure that the grain gets grown and uh the soldiers are bad bad people we find out in this town that there are heroin what is her even her name they say it a bunch and i can't even remember it i don't remember doesn't matter our our heroine 
Uh, she uh, stops the Marines from assaulting a villager uh, and uh, basically becomes allies with another one of the, the higher ups in the far- in the farm community and they decide that they have in order they have picked a side by killing a bunch of these Marines saving this girl that they're gonna have to fight but they are gonna need help help and so they go and find some helpers and eventually find uh, the rebel army. Um, and then the army finds them. They fight. That's it. Yep. I'm not I'm not even being flippant. You're not. That's pretty much the movie. There's no three-act structure to this movie. No. No. Uh, it, th- there's no real story to this movie. This movie feels simultaneously very long and very short. It's kind of insane at how there were times where I was like, man, we're still watching this movie. But then when we got to the end, I was like, we're already done. Yep. It, the movie itself is just over two hours. <sighs> Apparently, there's a four-hour rated R cut coming at some point in the future, which doesn't make a and ton of sense. And herein lies my problem with that as a whole. Do not... You Netflix, you were not allowed to promote this four-hour version. You're not. I am tired. I am tired of getting frustrated with movies like this and then being told, "Well, this is you know, there's a longer director's cut." No, no, no. You, I, I showed up for your movie. I would like to watch the movie that you have. If you wanted to make it a the four-hour movie, that's fine. You know make what, that choice. You know what this is, Jay. This is the bad version of well. If you want to watch the watch along, it's you can check out our Patreon for you know the longer extended version <laughs> with, with all you know with all the jokes. Do and, not and the lump burps us in. Do I'm, not lump us I'm in. I'm not with, lumping no. us in. No, no, I'm not because it's 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 not two separate products. Yeah. See, because no one is frustrated with the YouTube version of the stuff, because you know that's all just the, that's the good stuff. Right? Yeah, it's you cleaned still, up. It's cleaned up. It's without all the burps, farts, but and uninteresting parts. But if you want to see parts. the extra thing. That's just yes. longer in real time. That that is available to you, yeah. but you know that going in. With movies, you are expecting, especially what they cost right now. Yeah. And, well, I guess this is Netflix, so I still you, pay for Netflix. Yeah, it's but not you're free. expecting a full experience. Yeah. These have not been full experiences. No. So like, oh well, wait. You know, there's another one coming. No, no, no. I should have gotten a full experience the first time. Yeah. And this movie is not even close. To a full experience. No. And I I have to be honest. I wanted to like this movie. Sure. I was rooting for this because like I there are certain aspects of, of Zack Snyder's filmmaking that I really enjoy. Sure. I really like no one's no one like really paints paints a picture mm-hmm. in his shots like him. Mm-hmm. I really think so like there's so much about like the way he does action mm-hmm. and the way that he does you know, just set pieces in a way that you really feel transported. Mm -hmm. And I appreciated this about this movie is that this movie does feel alien. Oh, and the alien designs and like some of it feels very alien. And I appreciate that. Some of it is like not even close to alien. I just, by the time we get to the part where our rebel leaders are giving an inspiring speech, and I'm like towards the end. Yeah. yeah. I'm like when Cyborg oh, is giving that speech. Oh, we're almost done. Yeah. Like that ain't it. Like I appreciate that you've built like you've crafted all these amazing shots and everything, but like you, this is an inspiring speech that has had literally zero build up in any capacity. We just saw we, this guy. We literally just met this guy, and now I'm supposed to have feels about this. No. No. There's no. This movie. And a movie like this, a hero's journey, requires your main character to have some kind of, emo- like, for us to, as an audience, to really care about them mm-hmm. and whether or not they make it out. And they have succeeded in making a movie where I really, I legitimately don't care about anybody. And it's really frustrating because I really think that they thought for at some point that maybe that they were getting that across. Yes, I don't know, man. I don't know. That's what I'm most. This movie to me was more intriguing, and even especially the sequel, uh-huh. or the second. I'm sorry, the second part. 
Because, like, why? How? What were you thinking? This, but, because this truly is a part one. Yeah. This is not the first this movie feels, of a trilogy. This yeah. is a part one of a story that's, like, pretty much just the first act. Yes. Yeah. Like, nothing, this is not a, this feels this like is the not first a complete act. story. Yeah. No. The, no, the, the, we don't. Our our characters aren't really that different at, towards the end of this. No, there've been there's been no growth. Oh, this, man, this set is blocking traffic For, if, in if, such a way. If there's if you guys are if you guys can hear the traffic and or things going on outside, uh, Netflix is shooting the uh, the second season of the Night Agent in in and around my building. Which is fun. Which That's is fun. cool. Netflix is shooting a show here. That's crazy. Yeah. But it, it's they have a couple of uh, cherry pickers with giant lights on them because they're shooting at night. And they're lighting their set, which is important. Better that than day for night. But it's not. But it's New York City. But it's New York City at, on a, on a one way street, and it's yeah. kind of t- slightly kind of tight. So people aren't the happiest with that. <laughs> so movie making isn't it special? Yay! Yeah, this movie's bad. Yeah. No, no. I'm sorry. Let me strike that. The story's bad. The mo- like Jack Zack Snyder knows how to make a film. Yes. He's very no, good at thing. that. Yeah. It's the story he's telling that's not, is not great. And I think it frustrates... The thing that frustrates me the most about it is that that the movie is treating the majority of what's happening like we really care, but it hasn't done the legwork in order for, to, for us to make us do that. No, not even close. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's not even close. And I think my biggest issue with this film is that, like, the perfect example of it is that we have we are introduced to like an AI, like uh, a cybernetic being, Mm -hmm. a robot of some kind Mm -hmm. that clearly has sentience to some degree, Mm -hmm. and we're we're, they world build that a little bit, and they come down with the Marines, and they're part of the Marines, Mm -hmm. and there's a nice scene with the robot and the girl, and like you know, there's certain there they they set this robot up to be a big player in things. And then, hell, they even got uh, Anthony Hopkins to voice this robot. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, well, clearly this is Scarecrow. You know what I mean? If we're going, if we're doing the Wizard of Oz, we got our Scarecrow, and isn't that fun? Okay. And and then he is there for the the first fight, and then he is gone. And then we see him back at the end in, in a way that I was like, he took like 25 minutes of screen time. Like there was a lot that went on with this robot, and yeah. then they literally just bailed on it mm-hmm. in a way that I was like, "This movie doesn't ha- is like this movie is so." Fo- I think Sk- Zack Snyder with this movie in general may be so focused on the big picture of things that he is kind of like letting things die on the vine because he knows that I. I think he thinks the ends will justify the means I, to some degree. Which, yes, I was also thinking that, which is not a good place to start a franchise or a no. movie off of. No. Because I know the origin story is this, this was originally a Star Wars pitch. Yeah. Which, doing a Star Wars version of the Seven Samurai or the Magnificent Seven, yeah. that makes perfect sense. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I can totally see that. But they, Lucasfilm's like, no thanks. Yeah. Which, which is, that's understandable. But then you just wanted to make that movie anyways. So you're already taking and adapting a story you wrote for the Star Wars universe into your own universe problem is that it's still a sci-fi universe Mm -hmm. and you're basically trying to like oh these are all the same things from star wars but it's different and it's like this alien's pooping into a guy's neck isn't that cool yeah that yeah it's like that's okay the problem is it's too close man your fan fiction is too close to the source material but your og stuff is like oh isn't this cool and awesome it's like it's too close it's too close Oh, the main character is the, you know, adoptive daughter of the big bad emperor type guy. And his henchman guy who's going out is kind of a robot dude yeah, they and don't survives really fall. It's like, this is too close to Star Wars. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I mean, like, that's for me, it's just are they try, for me, it frustrated me that they gave us a, a like, uh, a seven samurai, um, and I was said magnificent seven, but it's the same thing. Same thing, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, they gave us they gave us a seven samurai, but like I don't, we don't really meet these characters in any capacity, nope. or 
it's more about just getting the getting a gang together. But also, I'm not 100% sure why they're going to get these people. There's a lot of unmotivated choices and movements in this game yeah. that kind of just... All right. I honestly, I feel like I, I feel like we're getting a little bogged down in the negative right now, and I feel like because it's you know from the story perspective. Yeah. yeah, I feel like we should probably like move into like trying to fix this in some capacity. Sure. Because like a lot of them watched it, they get it. Yeah, but if not, it's you know the, our watch along is on on Patreon. I highly suggest watching it. It's we have a, we have a fun time. Are we not putting this one on YouTube? No, we are, but also oh. the, the full, the full thing, the full, the watch, full watch along. Yeah, saying. I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, our Patreon, where you know we give you the the good version of this, a different version <laughs> that we're very upfront about and what's going on. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. we're upfront with it. Yeah, you want to see the cherry pickers? Be like beep and beep and beep. <laughs> yeah, man, check out our Patreon. <laughs> uh, praise Cthulhu. Am I right? <laughs> um. Okay. So, so we, what's the big like? What's the big fix here? The big fix is you, we make this a standalone movie. It's got to have three acts. Like, and I think it's that simple. It is that simple. Like, it's just this can go lead to a second film, but this has to be its own story. Yeah, and this is not even close to its own story. Yeah, it's not. It's an incomplete story. It's not like Dune and Dune 2 where they, they split the first Dune book and had to make it two movies because it would just be too long for, the, for one book yeah. or one movie. That's Or like definitely Hollows, right? Like They split it in two movies. Like, oh, that end point of the first was like, I mean, I guess you can kind of end there, but like we know the second half's coming, but like, okay, sure, I understand what you're doing. This is just like, what? this is completely new. This is no source material for this. You can't treat this like this is from coming from an 800-page book and all of its gold yeah. that you needed to like do homage to. No, no. you have to make this. It's a complete three-act movie, and it's got a, it's got a clip. It's got a clip, like it's got to... But also, like you got to give me reasons for if we want to do Magnificent Seven, that's fine. But we've got to like you've got to give me a little bit more. Mo- like a lot them finding a lot of these soldiers, which I don't know why you're like why you are hiring soldiers piecemeal for your army to take on an entire battleship of like an entire like full like fully armed you know i think it was called a dreadnought they were dreadnought. just they, they were worried about the one dreadnought that was in the like the outer sector yeah, of the galaxy it, or whatever three other guys isn't going to really make really move the needle that much you know well, what, what I mean? What if they're like special guys with glowing swords and a little hat that somehow stays on with future tech? Because that hat shouldn't be staying on. <laughs> yeah. No. No. So a three X. This is gonna be a three X story. Sure. Okay. So our, our we let's let's keep our our lead the same. She's on. She's running from a life of you know she killed. Uh, she can kill the 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 ex king of the empire. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. That's perfectly fine. But she's definitely on the lam, just trying to lay low and like yeah. just move on with her life because she just wants, doesn't want any part of it. That's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. But we, I think, we need to know about that kind of immediately. Yes. Like we, I think we need to not be coy about it. Mm-hmm. I think it's well, like the inciting incident. This movie should not start with this, with the opening of a space. Uh, subspace. Man, you really can't get over that. Jay, it set the tone for the whole movie. <laughs> Sir Anthony Hopkins is giving us a VO about what this war this this universe is, and then all of a sudden a space vagina opens up. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, yeah, there's and really we, no way. And we, really... we were talking, we were just like, oh, this is about we were saying something, and we immediately like the record scratched, <laughs> our brain stopped. <laughs> I'm like I can't believe what I just saw. And well, you, and yeah, you go, and you go, what? and that ship's kind of phallic. Like, oh my god, what are you doing? What even is that? A thirteen-year-old yeah. boy wrote this, and that's not the and and people, you know, and, the, and normally like for with other like we're just not we, we don't really go that direction a lot of times, but it was just so clear and obvious. That was it just was. like I have to say something. Yes, like I can't just not acknowledge what just happened in front of my own head. A Georgia O'Keeffe painting just showed up on screen, and yeah. a submarine passed through it. Yeah, uh, what else? Why? What is happening? 
So the, the, we the, we don't start with the Star Wars shot of like oh the long exposed you know ship passing camera. God, we didn't need to do. You start with the inciting incident. Yes. Of her crashing on the planet. Yes. Oh yeah. Great, and it's like awesome. Like, it's the kind of thing where I like the idea she crashes on the planet, and it's very obvious. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> Oh God! Well, mother ruled be with you. Yeah, that really hurt. Um, now the question is: She's crash landing on this planet. Do is she up front with the people that are there? Who she is? No, but I think the first guy, the, the guy that finds her, that that, that gently, that nice old man. Yeah, he no, he, he figures out. Yeah, and yeah. he keeps quiet. Okay. Yeah, and I think that if that if that's the case then I think we can kind of swap like the old man that found her to being quote unquote, unquote the leader of this village. And it's a situation where... Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Like, he he is playing coy, and you can make the scene with the other farmer when he's, like, trying to, like, offer them grain and mm-hmm. things like that. Uh, you can... He, he mis, misinterprets why he's trying to be coy about things. Sure. Um, because he's also realizing that he has to hide her, mm-hmm. but gets gets him into trouble regardless because he doesn't understand mm-hmm. like what's actually going on. Does that make any sense? Mm-hmm. Well, cause I mean like the, the problem with this, with the first act of this movie up until the point where the girl gets assaulted and she stops it. And then it's like, well, we ha- now we have to fight, which <sighs> making the, the Marines cartoonishly bad was just it's one thing but like that happens 40 minutes into the movie yeah that's too long yeah so we need to kind of clip this along she crashes she gets found she gets assumed into the the uh the culture here and we have to have a little bit of time of like a little bit of time skip of her like integrating herself in the community and like and just like wanting to kind of be like you know her own she wants, yeah, she wants to be her own person, but I think there's a conver- like there's a conversation between her and young handsome farmer guy. Sure, because I think you know, because I think it's you know her like caregiver or whatever the person that found her. I want to say dad, but that's not it. No, but similar idea. Father figure. He's the one that gets murdered. Yes, and it's the kind of thing where she she realizes what he died like the secret that he died to protect and he mm-hmm. realizes like the two of them have a conversation and he's like oh if you're who you say you are like you can help us like fight against these people and she's like i don't think you understand they don't know i'm here my like he died to protect my secret here if they find out that i am here they will just glass this planet from orbit and move on they can find grain other places like you just need to you need to grow them their grain and let them move on like, this is not going to end well. Like, they can't know. And she's like, I need to, like, go into, like, pretty severe hiding for your guys' own safety. Like, and they're like, I can't believe, like, you would, like, try to, you would try, to, like, pacifism in a time like this. Like, you're a soldier. And so maybe we get, like, a little bit more of her, like, a little bit more of what actually happened in this conversation. Yeah. You know, like yeah, this yeah. is a, an appropriate time for her to fill him in on who she is mm-hmm. and her trying to leave and escape. And like him trying to call her out for her inaction, mm-hmm. then we get the situation with uh, the Marines assaulting the farm girl, mm-hmm. and her half her realizing that she has to do something about it, and she's like, "Well, I guess my hand's been forced. Like we've got to go immediately." Now here's the question: Do we have this robot character in this movie, or is is it just even? I mean, he can be, but he should freaking be there. He needs to join the squad yes, immediately. I think if he's going to be in the movie, I think he's our scarecrow. We have Tin Man and Scarecrow. And you would think the Tin Man would be the robot. No, no. No, no. It's Farmer Guy. He's Tin Man. He's Tin Man? Yeah. Doesn't he need to find courage? Yeah, he's trying trying to find the courage to... So he's... No, lion. the courage is the lion. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. But yeah, then I think that's when we that's when we dip out and Robot comes along just for funsies. Yeah, because he's a part of this now. And the girl like I think the town needs to know what's going on immediately. As soon as the bad guys show up, like it can be like a year or so later, let's say. She crashes, she's you know, gets discovered, gets in, uh, uh, acclimates to the city or the town or whatever, keeps a bit thing on the DL, like the people kinda like her, it's like we see her kind of day to day life. But the, we need the thing is 
Zack Snyder's shooting style doesn't doesn't help this type of storytelling. Okay, go on. Because remember, like her opening scene with the plow. Yeah, she's just like plowing, and it's a long shot, and then she moves a rock, and we see the rock, and then she's moving, and the co- and the cool you know space horse or whatever. It is and everything's you drawn can, you can, out. It feels like it's on a sound. It's stage. It's like just well, I don't care if it's on a sound stage. It's no, like, I know, but I know. But we need to go. Yeah, we need to. We need. The, we're wasting time by with these with these beauty shots of things, which you can use those beauty shots later for the action. We don't need them right now because we need to show her growth and uh, being a part of the community and what her life is like yeah. here and for everybody else, so that when the bad guys show up and wreck everything, we understand what they're wrecking, and then we can be like, why they want to fight? Because I think that's like when the she gets acclimated, you know, she's a part of everything, but she's like kind of friendly, but like a little bit of distance and we can probably handle that a little bit better. And maybe not have the guy have a whole speech about how like, it's time for the harvest. Let's everyone have sex now. Like I was fine with it. I get it. It was a little weird. Um, I I, I will say this, this movie does have a pervasive, pretty horny. Yeah. But like in a creepy way, Yeah, it's it's not, it's, yeah, it doesn't, this movie, I don't feel safe watching this movie and not in like a, Oh, it's edgy. It just is like, no, I don't, I just, it feels, I feel, I feel icky. Icky. A little icky. Yeah. Um, but when the bad guys show up and like, you know, we're all grain person, rebellion, we're like, we don't, man, we don't know. We don't know. I think they, they don't know. But after they kill the guy, hide her secret, she gets called out for it. I think that kind of the town has a like, listen, I'm sorry. I didn't want to bring this to you guys. Um, yeah. Yeah. This is what happened. Flashback in lore about who I am and what I'm trying to run away from and who I don't want to be anymore. And then half the town can be like, well, we could just give her the grade and we just give her her. And she's like, you don't understand. They won't stop. They won't stop. You're all dead. You're all I'm dead. I'm so very sorry. This is the only hope you guys have. Uh, yeah. You're literally all dead. You're all dead. You don't have a choice here. And so they can have them be like, Look, I don't know how we're going to do it, but I mean, don't you know that, didn't you sell grain to the resistance or whatever? Like maybe there's a thing that maybe they could help us. And like the girl can get assaulted. She can like try to be trying to just bounce like, I just need to go. Yeah. And she sees it. She stops it. And she can stop it. Maybe a little bit before, you know, a little earlier in the scene. So it doesn't have to like drag on and be super creepy. And just like, this is. Yeah, it sucks. It's so, it just sucks. The scene takes too long. Just stop it. Just stop them from doing the thing. Just stop the one. No, and just also- stop the one guy from doing a thing. The other guys see it. Come to stop her from stopping him. They don't yes. have to partake it. That was, that's what it is. I'm sorry. This scene was really upsetting and just glorified the whole thing. Like everyone was going to be a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. That. Except that one guy. Except for the one guy. Who, who also, pro- who, who also ju- didn't dis- come along. Who also, who also didn't, come, didn't along. come along who on the adventure. Have come along. Yeah, I know. Cause he was like, well, I'm a part of this now. Yeah. He should have been there the whole time. Uh, yeah. I thought they he were setting him up. Thought they were setting him up to come along. And he just like, well, he'll probably liter- be in the sequel. Or he literally just disappears. Or he literally or he just serves his purpose. Yeah. It serves, it's like that we hired an actor to be like, to be, basically look at the camera and be like, we're not all monsters. Uh, and move on. Yeah. It's like, it's not a commentary if there's one of us that doesn't do it. Like, okay. I don't know. So she stops, her, she stops the assault. Yeah. Everyone realizes, well, crap. We got it. We're all in this now. Yeah, I'm so very sorry. I this is the last this is the thing only I way wanted. I can save your lives. This is the only way to save our, is this long shot. We have to figure out a way of reach, reaching the the not the resist the rebel moon. The reb, yes, this, we're, we're, we have ten weeks to turn this place into a rebel moon. Credits, <laughs> but that's Act One. Yeah, of like deciding she has to leave, and we have guys. Uh, robot goes with her. Little guy goes with her, and uh, farmer dude goes with her. Yeah. So like we have to go reach the resistance, because we know, because we know where this dreadnought's going to be. What do you mean? They're coming back in ten weeks. Oh yeah, we can take out this dreadnought because we know it's. Re- yeah, that's that's good. We, yeah. We have ten weeks to figure something out. But maybe we can plan a surprise attack because we know where they're going to be. Yeah. And they're not checking in with these guys. And we already murdered all of them. So we can do whatever we want. We can do whatever. We got 10 weeks to figure something out. Yeah. that's And it also starts a ticking clock. Mm-hmm. 
And I appreciated about one thing about space travel in this is that it felt like it felt like seafaring. Mm-hmm. It didn't feel like a it felt like a little submarine. Yeah, it didn't feel like mm-hmm. high tech. Just like you can blip wherever you want to blip. Mm-hmm. This was like no, like they 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 did set up a world in which I would believe that a dreadnought would appear on a planet sure. and not totally know what was going on. Mm-hmm. Like there's a little like it felt a little naval in a good way. Um, so then here's the question. Oh, great, we we set up ten weeks. Like we need to find the rebels. So mm-hmm. I think like I think. As we're moving into Act Two yeah, here, yeah, we're now in Act Two. Like I, in my head, my my like my structure brain is thinking like I think we find these rebels first, and then there's something that the rebels need, or there's some aspect of this that need that forces our main character to also pick up allies along the way. Sure, but I'm not sure what I'm not sure what an elegant way to find that. Well. I think as we were, we were as we were watching the movie and we're in that section of the movie, which is like an hour or so, yeah. like fifty minutes. It's a long. She fights that Spider Woman for a long. Of just going from scene time. to scene, like okay, this is you know sword lady scene. This is Jaiman Hanzu is here and he's a general. What? And we're gonna we're gonna barf a backstory on you and then put him in the, and then put him in the spaceship and move on. Yeah, yeah. And it's like he's a he's a tactical genius. Okay, what? Why? Why did we come here? Mm-hmm. We did. There was no conversation about coming here. We just the scene opened up, and we're on some gladiatorial planet. Yeah, with this dude here. And I think in like in the Magnificent Seven, weren't they bo- mostly all together to begin with at, at the start? To some degree. To yes. some degree, and they went like, "Oh, we we know a guy. We can you know, use his help too." Blah 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 blah. Oh, great! Now we're all together, and we're in the town. Yeah. Great. Then the, then we're in town for the, like the back half of the second act, and then we gotta yeah. get re- we gotta get ready, prepare for the third act. Like that's what this movie doesn't. There's that's why there's no third act of this movie. They just go. Yeah. Around. Their 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 objectives is just to go get the people, and it takes so freaking long. And yeah. all those scenes don't do the best job of setting these people up. I think it all comes. I mean, it could very well be a thing where they like our our heroine meets up with the rebels, and he's like, "Look, you know we're." We have we have been fighting for a long time here. Mm-hmm. Like I have been trying to unify a large amount of these people. Like if you can get these three different leaders, like we will be able to. Yes, I will be able to rally the troops to a degree. He's like they listen to me, but like you know we're we are we are fractured and we are split. Like if you are who you say you are, you should be able to inspire these people to our cause because mm-hmm. so, we have a prince. Uh, maybe that's like, oh, there's there are like we have an exiled prince because you know the home world exiled him, and so we have a planet of people who are disenfranchised without their royalty. If you can get him back, if you can spend thirty minutes taming a griffin for literally absolutely no the reason, the griffin doesn't come with. Doesn't come with. There's no. I thought the griffin was coming with. There's a huge whole sequence of taming a griffin that makes no sense, and I can't believe I'm even saying that sentence. It's what. <laughs> So we because it happens in this movie, it should pay off somewhere. In this movie somewhere, yeah, yeah. I can't even if it's there. Shows I think here's there's two ways of doing this. Okay, and I think we I think we can utilize both if we're gonna have you know a little over two hours. They figure they find the they get to the um the rebellion. Let's call it rebellion. They, get, they find the rebellion and like hey. This is the, the situation that's going on. We know you've been fighting them and haven't had a lot of success or whatever. That, well, that's the scuttlebutt. But we have a plan. We know where the dreadnought's going to be in 10 weeks. Yeah. Oh, crap. If we know ahead of time, we can actually plot something. Yeah. We have, we could do a lot, but if we really want to capitalize on this moment, we need a couple of other things. Yeah. So that maybe one of the steps in getting to the rebellion is talking to one of these people mm-hmm. and they come along because we don't need charlie what's his name we don't need him we don't need him you we know why because we, we have robot we have robot we also don't need him to betray anybody i think uh i i i'm okay with the betrayal oh sure but we don't need it but i think There's... you can have if you wanted it you could have robot accidentally transmit i guess but it's Some, not needed if you for needed this. it they they had him he needed to betray them to have a sequence at the end of the movie in which they fought. Yes. Because that's not an act three. 
They built to that in no way. Yeah. It just is a thing that happened. Mm -hmm. So he was the reason, he was the instigator of that battle scene. Yeah. But he doesn't need to be because we are going to be building. We've already built in what the Act 3 is going to be. The Dreadnought's going to show back up. Yeah. So like, that's... That's the, that's the, that's the, it's the, it's a trap. The trap's the act three. Yeah. And they show up early or something or something, something goes yeah. different. Yeah. But like, maybe they meet one of the other people. We have to fight the dreadnought at the end of the Yes, movie. we do. We have to fight the dreadnought. We have to fight the dreadnought and it has to like be, and I, honestly, the, I think the, the, I mean, we could just kind of skip ahead if we wanted to the act three, because like we know what the act two is. Yeah. They meet the rebellion. Maybe they meet, meet one of the p- other people on the way there. Oh, we need, uh, general guy we need general we need because we need hot blades hot blades spider killer well and for, prince griffin rider for for, for, for like for re, like for specific, specific reasons specific plan I think, reasons i think the prince is and it ends up being the prince ends up being like the second person they get and and it's they get spider woman to help them get the prince because the prince is um is important in that he can unify a good he will he will be like a unification for this one planet that has the ships they need sure that they won't give them the ships unless they have their prince back cool so and they they're like and he's somewhere that they need hot blades help to mm-hmm. get him out and so they get prince back and then they realize like with this dreadnought it gets to a point where they're like yeah but like we don't have like we don't have necessarily like the know-how in order what we need to do with this dreadnought oh i know someone who knows about this ship we go get general guy Mm -hmm. and then we're in a situation where we can actually do something we get the logical leap of of all why we need what this person does and why we specifically need him and how they're actually going to help us take down the dreadnought yes i need like definitive like hot blades is set up in such a way that it feels like she's going to go away and she's like and even that maybe that's the character arc yeah. is that like she's just a hired gun to help and then she's like nah like I think you guys are cool like I want to help mm-hmm. like that kind of thing I don't know yeah no and I think we have and we, and, and we could pull this off we could have a three pronged battle yeah and it would actually make sense because we've already set this whole thing up so like we have team infiltrate the dreadnought yeah team disable the dreadnought and and ground defense yeah, and there's a reason why d- different people You're saying are like space inside of their uh, ship, ship, ground, ground. Yeah, and so is, is that, and that's it, enough action. It, and it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be the whole thing because that's what it looks it's like. It's the end of Return of the Jedi, man. Well, it's, that's what it kind of seems like. Part two is gonna be. Sure, so I'm doing like a mini version of like oh, so we you know. I think this like, is one ship of an entire na- like an entire yes, fleet. Exactly. This is a small skirmish. Like this compared ship's got to go one- first movie. Yes. Like yes. It, the ship's got to go. The ship's got to go because that sends a, a because huge the rebellion message. now has started. Yeah. This is the planting of the flag. Like this little moon that had some grain on it defied the mother world or whatever yes and i think and i think our heroine is on infiltrate their ship yes it's 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 uh it's sword lady and um and our and our scar giver infiltrate Here, the ship to, to try to take out the 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 guy and here's like our, our little evil hero's journey of this i think we set up throughout the entirety of this movie that she is she is trying to remain anonymous still she is trying to be like a faceless soldier of you know this rebellion she's just trying to get back to her status quo of just being able to just like walk away and live her life Mm -hmm. and that's the whole thing she was already in a war she was already in a war she doesn't want another one she also but she doesn't want to be the face of it no she just wants she wants to be under the radar and i think in this big fight i think that that's the conversation that she's really going through with this like evil this evil soldier guy who mm-hmm. I thought he did a good job. He was very menacing. Oh, sure. I mean, he's really um, like a cartoon character, but like he, yes. with his, uh, his bone shillelagh. Yeah. Yeah. It was not explained at all. It would have been cool to explain it with a couple of sentences. I, I killed a giant. It's really interesting yeah. stuff. I want to know more about it. Like the amount of stuff that like he tried, like that Snyder tries to be coy with, like he's like, it's fun world building. I'm like, yeah, but you just have some, you make some wild choices and then don't mention it. And then and I look like the asshole for thinking it's weird. Sure. Um, but, I think that's she, like the, the, his big point with her is that like you don't he was like you know why the rebellion will fail he's like the rebellion needs heroes 
and you, and he was like, and this rebellion's hero is you, and you don't want any part of it. Like you, you're you're not owning up to any aspect of this. Yeah, you're stopping me, but like you know they're gonna keep coming, and you're just gonna run like you always do. You mm-hmm. just run, and you're just trying to you know save yourself from this, and that's fine. But a lot of people are gonna get hurt, and because you decided not to show your face, and that works out well for me. Like you can defeat me, but like we're gonna win eventually. Yeah, you kind can't of stop Mother World. And yeah. I think your the end of this movie as they're like taking out this dreadnought, or like, and you know who our leader is. Yeah, because you don't. We don't have to and show you know the once, emperor at the end of the movie. We can just because you to, know once you know once he knows you're here, he'll never stop. Yeah, you can't be the face of this rebellion. You're the face that it needs, but you can't do it because once that's that's so good. You can't that's be the so face good. of this rebellion because you know once he knows you're here, he'll never stop. So you can't like, and I think that's the hero moment where she realizes, like. You know, anonymity be damned. She gets on the comms, like the multi-planet comms that we've set up in other scenes sure, that like yeah. they can do yeah. that. Um, and she just announces to like the entire like system, mm-hmm. like, "Hi, here's who I am. Here's, here's what, what I did. Here's what I've done. Mm-hmm. And Here, here's what I did. Here's what I'm doing right now. Here's what I've started. And here's and and, and it's now going to be the thing that I finish. Mm-hmm. So like, let's go. She like assumes the mantle of the Rebel Moon." And ascends to the heavens and blocks it with the eclipse. Eclipse is <laughs> the sun. Yeah, and the, so you take the dreadnought down in this movie, and yes. then and then the war begins. Yes. This is the beginning of war, not a kind of, I guess we're fighting at the docks kind of gang fight. And then everyone shows up at the town to be like, great, we're here. Neat. There's still an enemy craft. Like, it doesn't make, it doesn't. Because it's not a movie. Because it's not a movie, it's not a movie, and I and, and I then said you this, expand from there. Yes, and it's easy to expand from there. Yes, because mm-hmm. like, oh, we gotta get off this rebel moon. Like we're, in, they know where we are. Yeah, we gotta go. Mm-hmm. Sorry, everybody, we gotta abandon the town. Like, there, we gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta cheese it. Yeah, to the rebel moon. We gotta find another rebel moon. Yeah, I think there you have it. Yeah, and also I think you just hire a more uh, an actually you know engaging lead actor. But other than that, I think you nail it. <laughs> I I really don't like commenting on acting performances when I do this because you know I have been hired to act before, mm-hmm. and I feel like kind of a, a jerk talking about performances. But I, I would be a lying if I felt like the per, her performance in this just didn't didn't inspire me to care about her journey yeah yeah and it's i and i understand the subject matter is a large part of it but but there is you know there should be some level of charisma that just was not there yeah i mean there's probably a lot of factors that Again, went into I feel it icky talking about it but, yeah it's, but, but it's just, just it, but yeah it's something that didn't quite work yeah that's the weird thing about us in the reaction and review space sometimes is that like we're we've been like we're close enough to show business that like we fully understand what it takes to like how much has to go right in order for something to mm-hmm. be good and work. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, I thought I, I I'm worried that this episode we've gotten bogged down in the negative just a little bit. But you know, but also, huh, I don't know, I don't know. This movie, man. The more I, the more I thought about it, the more I'm like it's a little oh. frustrating, right? A little, yeah, yeah. It really kind of bummed me out. Yeah. Because it wasn't a movie. Yeah. We, we, we went in with no expectations, except apparently the, the one expectation of it being an actual complete story, but just had a part two already greenlit. <sighs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you it can't doesn't use, have that. They weaponized their part two in this mm-hmm. in a way that I, they have not, like, if if not because I think, you know, I think our, our watch along will do well, and I think this episode will do well. Yeah. Um, We'll have to watch part two, but I have to be honest, after watching part one, there's no way that they've guaranteed. If it wasn't for my job, I would not be watching part two. No, I wouldn't. No. Neither would I, because I don't Or care. just for curiosity's yeah. sake. Not in an interested way. Only because it seemed like the second film is just going to be just the whole battle. But that in and of itself is like, that whole that doesn't make for a movie. I want to see Robot Fly Griffin, baby. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that makes a really good act three. 
Helm's Deep can't be the whole film. Yeah. Helm's Deep has to be at the end. Yeah. That's act three. Yeah. That's you I'm, can't have a whole movie of Legolas riding a shield down the stairs. You want to. You, you want yes, it to you be. You want that. it to be. But there's a reason you don't do there's that. There's a reason why you don't do it. Yeah. You got to have a deft hand when it comes to storytelling. Yeah. All right. Yeah. There, well, that's the thing. There is something good here. Yeah. It but, but it's not it's not aliens pooping in a guy's neck. Golly, that it's really... not just cartoonishly bad guys uh, assaulting a, a young girl. Yeah. Like it's you don't there's something good here. Yes. It's just not being told in the best way. No, it's just not it's not done in a way that makes me care. Hmm. Well, I think we fixed it, dude. I think we did too. Yeah. And we'll see we'll see what happens with the with the the scar giver. Sure. I don't know. The scar game. I don't know. That's not even cool. I don't know. It's... <laughs> well, the, the, the blood axes, Jay. Everyone's got to have a cool, like, double-worded double, double worded, a compound yes. uh, name. Yeah. Compound word, mm-hmm. compound word name. Yeah. Because it's cool. Because it's cool. Right? Because that's what, that's what Star Wars did, yeah. right? The Skywalker? The Star Killer? Come on now, people. It's cool, right? It's cool. Blood axes. <sighs> did they have axes? No. No, the blood axes didn't have axes. None of them had axes. Not even like a cool... I mean, she had cool glowing swords. She had an axe in the beginning, which made... I have to be honest. It that, made me that, think that, that she... That cool. That was cool. Yeah. But it made me think that that's who she was. In a way... Oh, wait, that's right. In a, in that's a way right. that wasn't cool. It was, in a way that wasn't like a clever twist of subverting expectations. That's right. They did name, In a way yes. that it was legitimately confusing. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot in this movie that they're like, huh? And I'm like, no, that doesn't actually make... You're not being clever. This doesn't make sense. Like, I'm not I'm not led astray to come back to something. I'm just set to wander. There's a, Then there's a big difference there. Yep. I don't know. We did it, Jay. We did it. 3X structure. We did it's, it. It's, it's spanned the test of time for a reason. But if you'd like to watch us react to it, I would assume it's either out or out coming out very, very soon. Uh, it's actually a really... F- we have a lot of fun with the reaction. Yes, we do. We kind of dug on this I movie just, quite I a bit. I just remembered the running joke. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was the running joke? Can't... Uh, is it, can you sing one of his songs? Does he have a, a good... Does he have a, a, yeah, I don't, no. I don't know. Harry <laughs> Connick Jr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Oh uh, well, I think we did it. This is uh, thank you for listening to the fix it. What do we do? We know we're fixing next week, or are we kind of we kind of oh, got we might down? we might be in unknown territory. Oh no, Jay, we gotta talk to Brian and figure oh, yeah. it out. All right, uh, we're in unknown territory. Oh no, oh boy. <laughs> um, yeah, if you'd like to know what you'd like us to fix, uh, p- uh, let us know uh, in the comments below. But if you're watching on YouTube, you know what to do: like, subscribe, hit that bell. Do that YouTube that you do so well. And if you're catching this uh, on wherever you catch your uh, audio podcasts, you know, leave us a little review. Maybe leave us some five stars. You know, maybe it just makes me happy. It's that they say it helps with the algorithm, but that has never been pr- totally proven. Uh, sometimes I feel like oh, podcasting apps are just kind of like Narnia. They just make up their own rules. It's Calvin Ball, baby. Who's to say? Just, just start swinging. Uh, but uh, as we end every single one of these episodes, heartbreak feels good. In a place like this. Oh boy. Uh it it's oh. It's the um the the chair chisel. Remember oh. pneumatic chisel? Oh, oh yeah. that you don't see coming. Oh. Oh, oh I didn't that like was that. Yeah. yeah. That sucked. Oh that sucked. Well. Oh. Oh yeah. This has been rug talk. <laughs> we'll see you guys Damn next it. week. <laughs> Bye. Bye.